Hey there, welcome to day 957. 957, does that sound right? Yep, 957 of what you up to now. Sharon Hornelstrom here, sipping my morning coffee and thinking about being sick as a dog, which was our idiom for today for Supersize Your Business, and how do you use that idiom to grow and build your business? Well, sick as a dog reminded me of COVID-19 because the last time I was sick as a dog was Christmas. This past Christmas, I was sick as a dog with heaven knows what. And part of the meaning of the idiom sick as a dog means that you're super duper sick and you have symptoms, but you don't really know what the cause of it was or what the, the source of the malady is, but you know you're really, really sick. And it's, it's an idiom and an expression and a simile that's been around since the 1500s, first published in 1705, because dogs, like some of us, tend to do things and they tend to eat things that will make them sick. We tend to do things as human beings that make us sick and we don't even know it. Dogs being a super common animal, uh, they, they're interacting with us all the time. So they're actually the subject of many, many idioms and I've covered lots of them over the last, I don't know, 558 days I've been documenting that I'm doing idioms, but I've probably been doing them longer than that, which is crazy to admit, but I got hooked on it. I got hooked on um, every day learning something new because guess what me looking up at the meaning of an idiom researching it and then sharing what it means and how I can tie it into growing my business and you can tie it into growing your business that helps me to grow and learn every day it's like having a word of the day only I have an idiom of the day which is like a bunch of words put together that means something different than the words individually so it, it started out as just a way to tide me over while I was moving and, and leaving and separating myself from my old life into my new but now it's, it's actually become kind of a little bit of an addiction that I want to learn something new every day and looking up an idiom and researching it is one little little way for me to move toward that every single day I have a big belief in doing one thing a day to move us toward what we want so whatever goal and objective we have in our life um, if we just do one simple thing one little thing it can be the tiniest of things but if we do something every day to move us toward that we get there way faster than we could ever even have imagined it's part of why I love challenges so much challenges take big tasks break them down or a, a, a result that we want to get work backwards break it down to little bite-sized pieces and before you know it by just doing the little bite-sized pieces you get the result you want you achieve the thing that you want to achieve and you're like wow that was really easy well when you looked at it before and thought I want to do X you, you stopped and you never started doing you never took that first step into that one thing at least I never did because it seems so overwhelming it seems so far away it seems so impossible but anything is possible if we just take the first step toward it and then the next step appears and I, I know that seems weird and you don't know until you actually try it by taking that first step and then you're like okay now I know what to do now I know what to do and it's the next and the next and the next and sometimes you can see two or three steps ahead of what you want to do and, and need to do to move toward that other times you can only see the very next step and sometimes you can barely see the next step but you step forward anyway in faith and the other things that you need appear the person the book the resource the tool the training the the thing that's been swirling around in your environment that you've never ever seen or noticed before you see it for the first time for the very first time and the answers they just come it's and it's it feels like magic sometimes especially when you're on the right path and the right trail and the right road for you things just unfold in a way that feels magical because it's it feels good because it's the right thing for you so today I was talking about forgiveness for uh, the lesson for set up for success I'm doing an interim for September I wanted to do something for the get up and go challenge because I've been doing that since the beginning of COVID really I wanted to do something but I didn't want to launch into the next 30-day challenge because it was like a couple days into September and I'm like ah, it just doesn't feel right I don't want to start it not the beginning of the month so let's go ahead and wait until October 1st to do the next get up and go challenge so October 1st through 31st will be the next 30-day free get up and go challenge where we learn and share and internalize and automate how to guarantee a process and a framework called soap how to guarantee and actually I've got my soap right here how to install that in your life to guarantee that you will always get better results after a change or challenge or a roadblock or an obstacle or anything that happens in your life than before you experience that. So it's actually a way to guarantee that your experiences leave you better off than before you had the experience. Now, even bad experiences, right? Like COVID-19, even bad experiences like getting divorced, even bad experiences like having a sudden cardiac arrest and dying, guarantee 
using this system, you'll be better off. And that's what we talk about in the 30 day get up and go challenge. So, and actually we don't just talk about it, we do it. We practice it over and over again to make sure that you're installing it in your subconscious. So it becomes a part of your being and you just naturally behave that way. It's like learning certain tools and strategies throughout my life from other people that have really helped me. So they help me so much that I just make sure that they're a habit and I automatically use them. It's why I can make decisions like this for most things because I've got a whole slew of decision-making tools depending on the, the importance and the urgency of the problem or the, the thing I'm looking for a solution for. I've got different tools that I just call on automatically to make decisions. And depending on how big or how small the decision is will be how complicated or how robust the tool is that I apply to that. And I've learned to do that over the years and I do this the same thing and I want to make sure that you have at least the tool for handling change that is installed in you so that you can do that as well because it's so powerful it makes our life so much easier so much more fun and we learn a lot more positive lessons than than we have negative experiences and negative lessons going forward my life lessons and the lessons I learn now are all way more positive and way more fun and way more moving me toward what I want than the ones that I was having and experiencing 10 years ago. Night and day difference in terms of dark negative lessons and light positive lessons. Total total flipping of the switch and that is, you know, because of the different tools I've used, because of the things I've looked into and, you know, I wanna make sure that you have those things at your fingertips too so that when you're ready, you use them. Maybe you're not ready right now. Maybe you're not ready to, uh, forgive and let go of some of the things that have happened to you in the past, some of the experiences you've had. Maybe you're not yet ready to take the lessons from those and, and to, to move on, to, to always remember, never forget, forgiveness is about um, you and it's for you. It's the gift that you give yourself. It isn't the gift that you give someone else. When I forgive somebody for something that they've done really heinous to me in the past, I am not forgiving them. I am def I'm, I'm forgiving them to let myself off the hook for being involved in that situation in the first place. So really I'm forgiving myself. And the hardest person it is generally for us to forgive is ourself. Because any situation, any experience we've had, we've played a role in it. Even if we're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, in our mind, we still have to forgive ourselves for being in the wrong place at the wrong time or for making the choices and the decisions that led us up to being in a situation or circumstance that wasn't right for us. It's called a mistake. We make mistakes, we make choices, we make decisions all the time that maybe lead us down the wrong road or the wrong path. Some of the biggest things I've had to forgive myself for were picking the wrong business, picking the wrong life partner, picking the wrong business partner, uh, missing opportunities in business, saying something stupid at, that I didn't because I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking about what I was saying or the impact that what my words were saying would have had on someone else. And it's like everything else, we, we do the best we can with what we've got at the given time. It's why I try to not beat people up for things in the past because guess what? We all have a past. We all have things that we did. But at the time, the things we do, the things we say, we think are best for us at the time. It's usually our subconscious popping up or our ego spitting stuff out. And we're not, we're not thinking of the consequences. We're not thinking of the ramifications. We're not thinking of the long-term impact of some of the things that we say and do. And that's why as we learn, as we grow, as we know better, we do better. As we learn things and understand things, we hold ourselves to a higher standard. It's called continuous improvement. So forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is for me. It's not for the other person. Somebody can have harmed you and you forgive them because you're letting go of the emotional charge that that experience and that event has. You're not forgetting it mentally, you're remembering and learning the lessons and taking the lessons from that experience, but you're letting go of the negative charge and the emotions that will continue to hurt you until you do. Uh, we hold, I, I believe that we hold with us every experience that we've ever had unless we consciously let it go. And it will continue to impact us, at least on a subconscious level, until we consciously say, or until we do some kind of a clearing exercise, there's all kinds of those which I'm not gonna go into, that you can use to let go of that and the emotional charge and the harm that it can cause you if you don't. Uh, usually if you meet very unhappy people, it's because they are holding on to negative experiences, negative emotions and negative things that have happened to them in the past. And as long as you're holding on to those and living in the past, you're not gonna be very happy in the present and you're certainly not gonna be very happy in the future. So. 
Forgiveness was the lesson for Set Up for Success today. October 31st, October 31st, October 1st, we'll go ahead and we'll launch the next Get Up and Go 30, free 30 day challenge on the Get Up and Go Challenge page. Feel free to join that and, and join us there 11 a.m. Central Standard Time or Central Time. Uh, every day is when we do the Get Up and Go Challenge. On, how was I thinking? I want to add some more components that's more fun to that challenge. I mean, I think it's fun, but I don't know if other people think it's fun. Uh, I want to make it fun, and maybe we'll gamify it this time. I did like a 10-day, did I do a 10-day get up and go challenge with the scavenger hunt? I can't remember. I think I did a live challenge workshop with the scavenger hunt, but maybe if anybody's interested, we'll try it and we'll add like a fun scavenger hunt and some fun prizes and gifts and acknowledgement that goes along with it for October. I think I'll do that. I'm going to, I'm going to. Write myself a note right now to gamify that. Let me have my... Oh, no. Not in the coffee. Um, to do that, because I think that would be fun. So let's find ways to gamify. And I know everybody thinks, oh, gamify, that's stupid. But it's not. It's actually fun. But I, I've done challenges with prizes, and it feels fake and forced to me. Here's the deal. I want people to be on my challenges, enjoy my challenges, and go on challenges with me because they want the result that we're getting together by doing the challenge. I don't want people to join the challenge because I spent a bunch of money advertising to find a bunch of people that would join a challenge because I'm giving away awesome prizes. I want to reward the people that actually do the challenge and give them the prizes, not the people that just come in because they saw, I, and I don't advertise to my challenges, you'll notice, because uh, I don't want a bunch of people that don't want to be there. Done that, spent years trying to drag horses to water, right? It's not very fun. When you're working with the wrong people, when you're when you're forcing or coercing or manipulating people to do something, they're never going to do it. They're not going to get the result that, that you want for them. And you can't want it more for them than they want it themselves. I can't want your success more for you. I do want your success for you. Probably, and in often, many cases, more than you want it yourself. But I'm going to bring you along with me. But I need people that are actually stepping forward and saying, I want this result, I want success, I want it too. And those are the people that I reward. Um, in corporate America, I remember, it always drove me nuts that most managers, most leaders and organizations spent 80% of their time on the 10% of the people that were the biggest problem and negative. All of the policies, all the procedures, all the rules, all the guidelines were written for the bad people, for the bad performers, instead of focusing on the 10% that were doing awesome and that were driving the, the company ahead and the people in the middle that were all doing what they were expected to do and all doing what they were supposed to do, instead of giving them the energy and rewarding them, the attention all went to the people that were the bad performers. Drove me nuts, drove me up a wall. So in my own businesses, I reversed that. If you are not doing what you're supposed to do, you got one-on-one -on -one attention after we had rewarded everybody else or treated everybody else the way they should have been treated. I hate that companies and, and businesses write policies and procedures just to cover their butt and, and impact everyone when one person had a challenge. Deal with the one problem, deal with the one situation. Don't make a rule for 99%, 99 people when there's only one person that's got a challenge or a problem. Solve the real problem, don't create negativity or problems for the rest of the people. So that's that's one of my pet peeves. That is really one of my pet peeves. Do what's right all the time for everybody. And if somebody's a negative influence, a negative impact, um, not doing the right thing, doesn't have the right attitude, it's just not the right fit, eliminate, you know, fix that problem. Either figure out a way for them to fit in or find another solution for them. Find another place for them to go. But don't destroy your whole culture, your whole environment because of one or two people that don't fit in. Make sure that you always have a good fit with your environment. So one of my pet peeves, I think we'll talk a little more about that because it's so critical to creating the business and the world and the, the life that you want is making sure that you're involving the right people, the people that are for you. And I don't think even though gamification is fun, I'm gamifying for the people that are participating. I'm not gamifying to get more people to participate. I think that a lot of marketers do that, more power to them, because they're chasing the, the almighty dollar and the money. They're not chasing the result and the change they want to see in the world. They're chasing, I need lots of money so I can do this for me personally. I don't get it. I get it. I was that way when I was younger, but now that I'm old, I don't care that much <laughs> about certain aspects. I want to make 
the best, the biggest impact that I can make. And that's more important to me than marketing and, and putting, uh, and not marketing. Marketing is getting people to know about you. The, I guess sales and, and the money aspect of it. It's, and it's important. It's absolutely positively important. But I like to have a balanced perspective on, on what am I really here to do? Who am I here to really serve? What the heck is this all about? And I guess I've, I've learned in the last decade to take that as my approach to life and to business. And it's given me a lot more, I had a lot more fun in business and a lot more fun in life, both because of that. And maybe part of that is due to forgiveness, my ability to forgive. I will say that I am definitely a work in progress when it comes to forgiving myself for, for mistakes and for things like that. I have a, a much harder time still forgiving myself for things. That's why I'm still continuing to work through things like, excuse me, your life is waiting workbook or playbook from Lynn Grabhorn. And I will continue to do those things probably till the day that I expire, the day that I actually leave the planet once and for all. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, I also am in an accountability group, a couple accountability groups. One's about branding and one is about um, building our businesses. And for one, we're challenged to do something 20 minutes a day for a project. And I am setting a timer starting today for 20 minutes to do that. I also said a week ago I was gonna take a nap every day. That hasn't happened. Happened the first day, haven't happened half since. But uh, maybe next week, maybe next week I'll try the nap thing and we'll see how that works. But I am committing to setting the timer 20 minutes a day and working on a book that I'm writing, working on my book. Um, and it's a project I've been piddling around with for a long time and just never set it as a priority. So 20 minutes a day, I know it'll get done. It'll get done a whole lot faster than if I just keep going at the rate I was going, which was not working on it, right? Not working on it, day here, day there, or five minutes here, five minutes there, doesn't work. It has to be a consistent effort. So I'll be doing that. I'm also working on a few other cool projects that I'm excited about, and I hope you're excited about too. Up and coming, 30 day get up and go challenge. I, I love the challenges. I think they're so fun and they're so beneficial that I will continue to do them probably till the day I die too, unless I find something that I like to do better. But right now, and for decades, challenges have been my thing. I was doing some, some work on the book and I, I realized and went back through an old blog that I haven't really written on. It gets posted on still, but I haven't really written on it for years, years I haven't written on it, especially since I started doing video and my vision started deteriorating. I have not, uh, writing is just a pain, you know, writing and texting, it's it's a challenge. I need to do the, the voice, but with the voice, you still have to correct it. And so I get the same dilemma, okay, I can say it, I can try to text it, and I'm gonna have just as many typos that have to be fixed somehow. So I might need somebody to actually start helping me do that. I don't know, I'm not there yet. Be there, but I'm not there yet. All right, that's it. That's all I've got today. Go out and have an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, be like an elephant. Always remember, never forget uh, that forgiveness is for you and that we're all here just to make the world a better place, to live our life as well as we possibly can, and to create a life that makes us truly grateful, appreciative, and happy. All right, catch you tomorrow. Bye.